Good morning. How are you? I am going to talk today about the three things you need to give up if you want to start moving forward. And for the first time ever, I've created a poll in, for this Facebook Live. I don't know exactly how it's going to show up. I've never done it before. And so if you see the poll and it shows up and you want to answer, that would be awesome. For those of you who are going to be joining live, I am so pleased to see you here. And for those of you watching the replay, you know what? I'm loving seeing you here too. I want to hear from you where you are watching this from and if which of these three things is the one that you want to work on most. So let's dive in. So the three things I'm going to tell you and then tell you what they are because I don't believe in drawing it out. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about each one. So the three things that you need to let go of. The first is comparing yourself with others. That's the first. The second is you have this feeling that you have to do everything right now. The third is comparing yourself with this imagined perfect image of yourself. So let's talk about the first one, comparing yourself with others. Now listen, lots of people have said this before and it's still important. It's still even in some ways more important. We forget, we go on social media, we have a look at all the different things. We see beautiful curated Instagram feeds. We see engaging Instagram stories. We see people who do great Instagram lives. We see all kinds of beautiful, wonderful, fun, and elegant things. And then we think that their life is perfect and ours is just a life. It's not a perfect life. It's a life with bumps and bruises. And I know you guys know this, and I know that we still fall prey to this. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about it. So anytime that you find yourself in this place of comparing yourself, comparing, well, that person does a much better video than me, this person does has more clients than me, that person had a more successful uh, book launch than me, remember, you are comparing your inside the part of you that's vulnerable, the part of you that's maybe a little bit doubting about what you're doing, the part of you that you have to gather your courage together every day to keep going, you're comparing that inside of you with their outside curated feed. So you can never win because they're showing you the face, the example, the experience of a curated chosen polished version now i know this isn't everybody and there is a ton of people that show up in all kinds of spaces where they show up as real people and i think that that's great and even those people we can still use that as a funny weird trick about well then i need to show up in a more real authentic way and to be even bigger or more different than maybe I feel in this moment. So first thing, comparing yourself with others is a place where it's going to keep you stuck. So what do you do? Well, you keep your eyes in your own game. You remember who you are, you remember your strengths, and you think about your strengths and you work to your strengths. And your strengths don't have to be flashy things. Your strengths may be that you have a home where it's a wonderful, loving place. What could be more fabulous than that? To have a warm and loving home. Maybe you're the person that you love to sit and read and you read great stories to your kids or your grandkids and you create just a world of imagination for them. Well, that's something that's pretty darn special too. So stay in your own lane, play to your strengths. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in number three as well. Okay, number two, the second thing that I believe you need to give up to move forward is to stop doing everything or thinking that you need to do everything 
right now. So right now I'm talking to the business people. I'm talking to the coaches. I'm talking to the service-based entrepreneurs. You guys do so much already. And it's like you have this huge platter of things that you are doing and working and practicing all the time. And then every time you find something new that you think might make a difference, you just take it and you add it to your platter. And this platter is overflowing of things that you choose to do, things that you've taken on that aren't necessarily the right things for you. So you guys, I'm looking down here because I made a whole bunch of notes for this right now. So in my space, I you'll see me here, I'm on Facebook Live. Today alone, I have seen people that tell me at that I should be doing a live stream every single day even if it's only for five minutes. I've seen people tell me that I need to get out and speak in front of a crowd, and that's gonna be the way that is going to help me get my message out. I have seen people that have told me that the best, best way is to have a wonderful membership site, a place where people really feel comfortable, where they enjoy the community. And I've also seen people that say, what I need to really do is write a book, and that is going to be the thing that's going to be the most important. And what I got to tell you is every one of those things is awesome. It is true. They are all wonderful. But what we forget is that each of those people, each of those groups who's making that recommendation, they have worked it for a while. They've practiced. They've mastered it. They found out that that was the right thing for them. So they're keeping going and they are sharing the right thing for them with you. So you've got probably 20, 30, 40, 50 people sharing the right thing. It doesn't mean that all of those right things are right for you. And even if a tenth of them are right for you, it doesn't mean that you need to do them now. So, you got 24 hours in the day, just like I do. What you need to do is you need to know what is right for you. So fewer is better. Fewer and better. Know yourself. We're right back to knowing your strengths. Are you a video person? Are you a kind of person who loves to write? Are you the kind of person that loves intimate one-on-one -on -one conversations? Are you the kind of person that just shines standing in front of the room talking to a group of people? Know what makes you light up and then choose few. One, two, three tops things that you are going to work on and stay in your lane and work on those and master those and if you find after you've given them some effort and some time that, you know what, it's really not for me, give yourself permission to release it. You don't have to keep doing it. All of those opportunities come to you and all of them work, but you get to choose which few you want to work with and which ones, the fewer, the better. Do it fewer and better, and the fewer opportunities, the better for you. So that's number two. And the third is comparing yourself to the perfect version, the perfect imagined version of you. So we've talked about the first one was comparing yourself with others. The second thing that keeps you stuck and keeps you all jumbled up is trying to do everything right now, trying to do all the things right now. The third is comparing yourself to an imagined perfect version of you. So here's an example for you. This morning I woke up and I knew I was going to do this Facebook Live. I knew what I was going to talk about and I was excited. And then I looked in the mirror and guess what? I need my hair done. I'm going to get my hair cut. I'm going to get my hair colored today. The gray is starting to show through. The cut's just kind of starting to lose its shape. In the past, I would have said, oh, I couldn't possibly go on Facebook Live today because my hair doesn't look perfect. I need my hair looking perfect and professional to show up and do a great Facebook Live. 
And what do you see? You see me here in front of the camera, right? Doing this Facebook Live, regardless of where my hair is. And you may look at this and go, your hair looks fine. And that's not what we're talking about. We always see the best in others, but we don't necessarily see the best in ourselves, right? So if you're comparing yourself with this imagined perfect version for you, you're never going to move forward because your hair is never going to be quite right. Your makeup's not going to be quite right. You're not going to quite have the right lipstick on. I'm wearing a, a sweater to keep myself cozy because it's cool out here. I'm not perfectly coiffed and perfectly dressed to come here for you. And I'm showing up anyway. So think about this. When you stop yourself from doing things because you are comparing yourself with this imagined perfect version of you, you never get to show up. You never actually make it out the door, make it talking to a client, make it get in front of that camera, make it having a great conversation, make it sending that email that you've been meaning to send. You never get to do that because you're never perfect enough to do it. And the weird thing is, and this is the games your inner critic plays on you, right? The weird thing is that later on today, I'm getting my hair cut and colored. And as soon as that issue is taken care of, I will no longer care about that. I will find something else for the reason that it's not perfect enough. So this perfect, imagine perfect version of yourself is always out there in the distance. It is that carrot on the end of the stick that you can never reach. So once my hair is done, who knows what my next thing will be about why I shouldn't show up, why I shouldn't send that email, why I shouldn't do a Facebook Live, right? I'll have something else. Next time is probably gonna be that I'm too chubby. Well, guess what? I am too chubby and I'm still healthy and I'm strong and I still have a message that I wanna help you with. And if I show up in this way, for those of you that might be feeling you're a little too chubby, guess what? I just want you to know that it's okay. Yeah, in the future, I'll be a little bit different. Yeah, I could be a little bit more improved, but what's most important is that I don't stop this imagined future version of me from being who I am right now and knowing that I'm okay just the way I am to accept myself, to appreciate myself, and to move forward anyway. So listen, I hope some of this resonates with you because you guys know that lots of times the things that I share with you are the things that I need for myself, and then I hear from you guys. You send me emails, you send me DMs, and I love it when you reach out to me. But if you've been holding yourself back because your hair isn't quite right, you're feeling a little chubby, maybe you don't have the perfect backdrop, maybe you're a little nervous to go to that networking event, maybe, who knows, maybe you're a little nervous to send that email, maybe you're a little nervous to meet somebody for coffee or to speak to that person in the line beside you, don't worry. There is always going to be this imagined, perfect future version of you, and you are perfect enough just the way you are right now. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Three ways to get out of your own way so that you can start moving forward. If you guys have questions, please pop them in the comment box here. Oh, hey, Melanie. Oh, gosh, it's so nice to see you're here. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm guilty of this as well. Hello. So nice to see you guys here. Any other questions? Any comments? Okay. Looks like we're done for today. You guys, so pleased to talk with you today. And I want to hear from you which one of these three things is the sticking point for you. And let me know. How are you going to change it? How will you choose to accept yourself? How will you choose to be a little kinder to yourself? How will you choose to change that comparison thing? What are you going to do? For me, remembering to accept who I am, remembering to get out of my own way, remembering to take a couple of steps to take action anyway, regardless of what that inner voice is saying. That's the thing that gets me out of that feeling stuck. 
and I'd love to hear from you too. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye.